Fed does have power over prisoners and policies. The ICP could expand for instance, transfer of unpaid crown wages. Continuing superior and continuing certain benefits. What is needed is better enforcement. Ignoring problems serves the interest of no worker. Business as usual politics is racist. Normativity bias naturalized oppression, and nor convoys not bring marginalized communities. Your decision is to prioritize those communities. Blank states and blank. Counterfactual thinking influences reaction to and explanation of events at several levels. These are reaction is discrimination made in this totality already and accept unequal outcomes. The rules always are preferences for the normal and customary effect how we evaluate events. <coughs> that goes strongly to misfortunes that follow unexpected patterns. It leads to accept the tough order that finds jarring and most challenges ways to justify patterns. Viewing them as rational can back to the same forces the norms, expectations, and practices that contribute to bias judgments. What makes them public story for us is racial class. Whatever happens in black neighborhood doesn't surprise anybody, but the public is conditioned to expect that. Their suffering is normal and unremarkable. We need to engage the government, even if the government is bad, in order to combat these structures and help people and have to make demands. Act large, protest with law, argues. Authoritative contribution claims are non enforced form. Capitalism would not level over its own contradictions, challenge them to struggle to everyday demands, establish immediate objectives by which social movement is deemed possible, engage the social head on. A strategy progressive is not the possibility for revolutionary seizures. Gilmore calls an armed reform in the context of prison, places where people are struggling. Red nations are fighting prison employees are central to institutions. To use the language of power of state institutions, the reasons fail with many statements that should yield central commitments to prison abolition. <laughs> with that being said, I'm now open for cross examination, which is three minutes. Are you good? Uh, yes. My first question is Do you think the plan results in prisons being abolished? No. You said the plan would, quote, make the prison system unsustainable. We've made that a plan implies... that would make the prison industrial complex unsustainable. We don't think that these things are the same. Okay, so if that is the case, how are you able to solve any of the things you said about the prison structurally being racist and harming workers? Well, we think that we stop the racialized exploitation of these people's bodies. We stop the financial incentive that goes into companies to lobby for things like three strike laws, which results in more equitable laws being made. They're able so to reduce do you the think the plan then reduces the prison population? Yes, we think the plan would reduce the prison population. Okay, and how would the plan achieve that? How would it achieve that? Um, our Smith evidence indicates that the reason that the state makes prisoners have to work is because they need to recoup costs. Our right evidence explains that right now the state makes about 14,000, or the companies make about 14,000 of prisoners. Our argument is that when we pay prisoners the same as everybody else, if not more, does that then mean that we... So then when you let some of these people that are currently incarcerated out of prisons, like, how do you ensure that they will not pose a threat to civil society? Well, we say so the people plan, like rapists, murderers, you just let those out? Um, I really think you're mischaracterizing our constructive You theory. just said you reduce prison population. Well, I think that we change the way that, that is Some people that are currently prohibited and, like, incapable of committing crimes can go out and well, commit crimes, yes? I mean, we have not said that, like, people serving life sentences for violent crimes suddenly leave. We've said that people, our Decker evidence explains, plenty of violent people get released from prison, and they end up going back because they aren't properly reintegrated right. in society. Right, but what you just said was you release those violent people. I don't think that's what we said. I think we said those violent people will get released anyway. Our claim is how do we help those violent people reintegrate in society? Okay, again, I'm I'm very confused why you think the plan helps violent people how does it help them? We think, well, our Decker evidence explains that paying these people means they have funds to support their family, which is able to support their life once they get out of prison. We okay. think otherwise they're left in poverty, which makes crime more likely. Okay. Why does reforming prison then not solve if you do not abolish prisons? I we think do reform listed. prisons. We need to reform prisons through giving a living wage. That is necessary. Right, but why is a living wage necessary? You said things like providing healthy food. Well, that is a living wage. Our, our evidence, which we read at the top, introducing the living wage, says that that includes healthy food in these things. Right. We also think people have a right to be paid for the labor they do with their bodies. Right, again. Okay, so... For, then what types of people do you release? Like what we types don't of result in people just being released. I think you're you said you reduce argument. the prison population. We reduce the prison the population because we reduce the amount of people that are going into prisons each year. Because no, but to do that first, you have what? to release them. What? People. That is not at all how it works. I think you're just completely misconstruing our evidence here, and I think I've been very clear on this. I disagree. Um, it is. Uh, let me just. Thank you. 
witnessing unfold this traumatic result in negative psychological effects, including anger withdrawal, post-traumatic stress, and desensitization to violence. My last contention is elections. Robust polling proves that Harris wins the election now. Economist 1027. The chart is inserted. Harris is leading nationally. Ringer 1027. Harris advantage among likely voters 51% to 47%. Harris groups show a bit more propensity to vote. The plan flips the election and destroys her chances. One, popularity. Voters from both Republican and Democratic parties support increased incarceration. Peer research did this. Majority of voters, 61%, say this status is not top enough on criminals, while 25% say the system treats criminals right. Biden supporters, 40%, say not top enough. 36% say it's about right. Two, top on crime. The perception of softness loses her the election. Peterson, 24. Political and media elites use top on crime. Aggressive ads decry Democrats for being loose on crime. 60% of voters said crime would play a major role in choosing a candidate. Dems reach by trying to be tougher on crime that two parties compete to enact more punitive policies. Three, swing voters. The plan is both viewed and labeled as socialism. Scholar 9-6. Trump says that Democratic candidates are socialists. It is dishonesty. What is labeled as socialism is any attempt to brutalize citizens. It's the freedom to work at a living wage to have political agency. The mere mention of socialism alienates swing voters. Vigo 24. Trump voting for agonies of vulnerability, calling her a Marxist. Reality, Trump would work has fine traction. American public is politically unsophisticated. People are moved by emotional appeals and scary sounding words such as socialism. Average American not able to define what a political ideology is. Are there enough voters who can be triggered by attacks to support Trump? Mark the card at Trump. Robust point proves moderates hate the plan. Ballard 18. Only 17% of Republicans, 32% of politically independent <coughs> agreed. One third said prison workers should not be paid at all. 30% say current wages are acceptable. Moderates swing the election. Pass 24. Outcome will be decided by moderates. Significant roles in swing election contributed to Trump's win in 2016. Attention to me measures both the past party, merchants make all the difference. Trump will roll back the pin and push for more aggressive policing. ACLU 24. A second Trump accelerated mass incarceration and rolled back decades of progress by encouraging aggressive policing, draconian consensus, and expanding the death penalty. Trump called for abuse of police. These policies will have an outsized impact on migrants and many reincarcerated thousands. Independently boxing global nuclear war. Hunter 24. Trump's two point elites are likely to attend worse impulses. Trump will be acting in a far more disorderly world. He's running amid major wars in Europe, ME Taiwan, SPS, Iran, Nokia, and other crises. Unruly world demands leadership. Trump would shed our national trade, pure retreat with strikes against Iran, threats to turn and and extraordinary instability, and power vacuum. Now the affirmative contention. Reduced policing is bad. Crime striking minorities are under police. Crime 13. Progressives cling to the views that crime is imaginary. Overstated the roots is inequality. Doing better does not mean more than needs to punish. It means using security. Time it, crime is a real problem. Time victims are minorities. Criminals are protected wrong from by under enforcing law. Better policy give us less incarceration. Abolitionism risks violent crime. From number 19. We do have serious incarceration problem, but she conflates legitimate reform with abolishing and letting violent criminals run loose. Okay. Um, are you good for cross-examination? Yes. That last card was marked at letting violent criminals run loose. I think that's not are we good? Mm -hmm. All three judges? Okay. Um, I'd like to talk about the arguments that you make against my contention. I know it's, you've made a claim that abolitionism is bad. Why do you think the affirmative leads to that? Well, our evidence does not just say that abolition is bad. It says, more importantly, that the criminal justice system needs to be strengthened because currently crimes targeting minorities are under police. Okay. So what it says is it gives examples of past cases. For example, Albert Flake murdered his mother and they let him out 25 years later because they thought he was rehab and he immediately killed another minority okay, woman. So and our evidence says furthermore, that sorry, how would you our evidence says that prosecuting these crimes and enforcing policing against crimes against minorities is especially important because it reduces structural violence. Okay. Um I guess I'd like to follow up that question. What is an appropriate way to treat people who've committed these crimes? Well, First is that we don't think, our evidence says incarceration is decreasing now. Second is we think that reforms are sufficient to solve. The things you listed, such as providing food as well as providing other material necessities are not only in complete to a living wage. For example, I, the government like could reform. A question. Um, I guess, so then my question is just, why do these people deserve to be enslaved in prisons? Well, we don't, we think that it's necessary in necessary. order. When it, what is the threshold for being necessary to enslave another human being? Why, why, is, where is there, why is that ever okay? Um, we've made an argument that says that the judge should maximize expected well being, well -being. but we have reasons for why the plan both increases crime and results in increased pain. Okay, I'd like to ask a little thought experiment. So, your election says that you've essentially claimed that doing something that would help people in prison, that that would be perceived negatively by various voters. Um, do you think that the fact that many people in the South before the Civil War wanted to keep slavery going, do you think that that would have been a reason not to do it if the majority of them didn't want to end slavery? Well, first of all, you would have to win that your intent outweighs your intent. I think we've asked an ethics question about morality and the resolution says odd. I think what I want you to answer my question. 
So when, when is deferring to the majority bad? What circumstance justifies not doing that? These claim that Republicans Well, we can make arguments for why Trump would wear some structural lines. Okay, Trump for example, would wear some structural lines. Um, yeah. For example, our evidence says that not only will he roll back the plan and accelerate back, back incarceration, plan. What, what does your evidence say? Can you walk me through that? Our evidence says, quote, Trump will accelerate mass incarceration. Which Why? Is directly so Trump's Trump. first term, he actually pushed for a lot of criminal justice reform. Why do you think that Trump is going to do that? That's not true. Our evidence is, is from true. this year and says that in his new campaign, he has explicitly advocated for also doing things that would harm minorities. Okay. So our evidence says he would also push for more punitive policing against minorities and worse <laughs> structural racism. So we don't think the thought experiment necessarily matters because we've made an argument for why we have those terms. Okay, um, that is time for cross-examination. Uh, regretfully, my computer needs some plugs in. I need to get my charger. Let me do my best. Traffic at three minutes and nine seconds remaining. I'm going to send some new evidence that I'll be reading this week. affirmation for a plan to make life livable for hundreds of thousands of prisoners who deserve better. They make two responses to my case. Neither of them should be critically persuasive. The first argument was that reducing police is bad. You don't change anything about police for under-enforcement of crime. The police make a claim that nonviolent people should not be locked up and that our plan would resolve this if we remove economic incentives for these people being locked up per our right evidence. Next, they said abolitionism increases crime. I'd like to start by pointing out that they didn't read the entirety of this card which means I think that it should be counted full weight. Second, I think that cross-examination has litigated out this argument. We don't need to be about abolition of prisons. Framework. We agree with their value criteria. However, we think extinction is absolutely the wrong frame to think about this debate. Extinction, really, this isn't even a question. We need to create a more equitable world over some minute risk of nuclear extinction. Cross-examination is pretty clear. They would be okay if the majority of people said they disagreed with something to enslave people. That's obviously unethical. Any ethical theory has to be able to say this is wrong or it results in the tyranny of the majority. Their evidence about debating about extinction is about needing to talk about weapons. We can do that elsewhere, but when we talk about a policy to help people in jail, we should talk about the likely effects of that thing. We say extinction shapes our future. We do need a better future. That better future is necessary through the small steps that happen today in places like these deliberative forums. The state doesn't trade off the structural violence. It's for calling evidence about why war is important in academic studies, not policymaking. Second, it totally does put structural violence on the back burner. Since my opponent will say that any percent chance of nuclear war, whatever other terrible impacts that they try to go for, 
means that we should let people be enslaved. They say we're biased against extinction. You're biased against it for good reasons. It's fake. Psychological bias comes far away because decades of media have told you this is okay. Look at their birds argument. Prefer our birds and evidence on why we can specify. It's the most real world. They haven't done a good job explaining the answer to this argument. Whenever a living wage has been implemented, it's been targeted to the group, which is we have the most accurate reading of the resolution. Whereas they just talk about what a living wage benchmark is, we talk about what a living wage is. Reject the court case that defines worker as in it's specific to the context of that dispute. Second, they say limit to the ground. We gave you this affirmative before the ground, which means we knew what we were reading and means that you should be able to prep a case against it. But we need this in France to determine specific intricacies of policymaking, therefore it's best political education. No abuse, we will answer their other contentions, and if they win their argument, then we will defend the entire resolution. The crime is advantage. First, this is absolutely the wrong argument. Nothing about our plan increases crime. We reduce it over time by preventing nonviolent offenders from being locked up unjustly through things like three strike laws. We also think that we better allow people to integrate into society. Even if the fear of crime is bad, we can't let people be enslaved to stop it. Think about it like this. People get out of prison anyway. The question is just, what do we do with those people? Our argument from our Decker evidence is that a living wage allows these people to better integrate back into society while giving their family money, which allows them to not have to commit crimes again, which means that we solve their impact. We turn their case because we solve recidivism. We can agree guns are bad, but our argument is that by ultimately reducing crime, that we stop gun violence too. Now, the election contention. This is what my opponents are going to go for. We'll answer their link arguments. The plan is not soft on crime. Nothing about the plan means that we let criminals do whatever they want. Rather, we've made a plan. Our plan says that people should not be enslaved. Obviously, that shouldn't be something up for debate. Obviously, voters will know that that is not a question of socialism, but a question of human dignity. The link about socialism says Trump says Democratic candidates are socialists. We do that anyway. Regardless of what Trump does, we need to think about the right thing to do regardless of that. My opponent will largely bring up his moderates hate it in their next speech. His card doesn't say they would change votes, and it's very vague. We will read some evidence that says that they're wrong. Prison reform is popular. FW24 explains significant unwavering support for CGR. 70% of voters support, 23 Republicans, 87% of Democrats. Overwhelming support for policy change beyond political affiliation. Numbers since 2022, 58% is more likely to vote candidate. The support reform opposition down to 2022, 10% 2024. Trump's case is wrong. Back to 18. After campaign from advisors, Trump threw his backing behind legislation with promoted legalization and blank census came out in favor of expansive, more expensive bill without Trump when it comes to a vote. For these reasons, sign the affirmative. Okay, um, I will start my slides with the
which means only we have read evidence that says that it would not be popular. Two is that our evidence explicitly indicts this. It postdates their evidence because it is from June and says that actually 41% of Biden voters as well as 21% it says that 72% of Biden voters actually think that, again, prison workers should not be paid and that workers and that the cr current criminal justice system is, quote, not tough enough on crime, which means that we have evidence that post state justice system plan is unpopular and would cause people to not vote for Harris anymore. Now, the only argument, other argument I have to answer is that Trump's case is wrong. Their evidence is from 2018 and is about a singular crime bill that Trump signed. Our evidence is from 2024. It's like new interviews with Trump officials and says that Trump would, quote, accelerate mass incarceration and roll back the plan. But even if you think that he will not do that, our evidence explicitly says that he will push for more punitive policing and multiply structural violence. It is empirically proven he's been racist so many times and that obviously would have a factor in his policies, which means that we are way under their framework. But we also do have an external impact. Our evidence says that if Trump were re-elected again, he would withdraw from geopolitical hotspots like the SES, ECS, and Taiwan, and that would cause Russia and China to lash out in those regions, which goes nuclear. Now the framing of damage. They have mishandled too many warrants for why extinction outweighs. They said we should, quote, maximize expected well-being, and the way you do that is by preventing nuclear extinction. One, they thought that the process of extinction is infinite. It precludes every single future value, and it is painful. It kills billions of people, which means that even if they win, that the prison population is hurting now that cannot outweigh 7 billion people dying in a painful nuclear hellscape. Two, they have dropped that their offense collapses to ours. Remember, the one in C explicitly said you should ask yourself why prison abolition should, is good. The reason why they think it is good is because people are suffering now in prisons, which proves that their offense collapses to suffering bad, which nuclear extinction acts to this on a much broader scale. Three, they have dropped that being alive is a prerequisite to, quote, establishing a more equitable world like the winner said, which means the best that way. They've also dropped that specificity is key because all of our evidence sites that discussing nuclear extinction in this context is valuable. The Barakawi evidence says that discussing war does not trade off with focusing on structural violence, and in fact says that war, quote, makes visible other forms of violence, and they just do not have a good answer to this. The Wiener evidence, lastly, says that pre analysis of your prefrontal cortex shows you're more biased to events that you can see happening in the status quo, but you cannot predict events that are probably like nuclear extinction. And we are not saying you should check out on my new risk of extinction because they just said impacts were conceded. Okay, I have three minutes and ten seconds. I'm going to start that right now. 